Good morning, everyone. This is Professor Vishal Gupta with BUAD 425 Data Analysis for Decision Making at the USC Marshall School of Business. This short video is about how to use clustering on the Movie Lens data set as we did in class with JM. So let's get started. So here I have the Movie Lens the JMP data file. Uh, as you'll see, there's about 1,600 or so movies that are listed, and for each movie, again, we have uh, these various flags, you know, whether or not the critics believed this movie, for example, Toy Story was an action movie, uh, they did not believe it was an action movie, did not believe it was an adventure movie, but for example, they did believe it was an animation, uh, and they did believe it was a children's movie. So each movie has various flags in these various categories, and I have here at the very end the year at which the movie was uh, released. So we talked a lot about why we want to cluster this data set and what we want to do with it. I'm just going to go ahead and show you the mechanics of how to cluster it with hierarchical clustering. All right, so to fit the hierarchical clustering, I'm just going to go to Analyze, Multivariate Methods, Cluster. Then I'm going to choose in this resulting window all of the variables that I want to use in my clustering. We talked in class about what good variables are to use for clustering. In general, these variables should tell you something about what makes two movies similar or what makes them different, uh, and they should be numeric. So I've chosen all of the data here, with the exception of title, because of course the title is not a numeric variable. All right, I'll put these up here into the Y columns. I'll make sure that the method is hierarchical and that I'm standardizing the data. I then hit OK, and jump creates a dendogram for me. Now, depending on what you were doing earlier, this dendogram might be colored, it might be black and white. To make it colored, or if the colors look strange and you need to fix the colors, you can always go into this red arrow and choose color clusters. So I'll choose that, and now my colors seem to map up a little bit better. We talked in class a great deal about how to read this dendogram and what it's showing you in this left-right distance. I'm not going to go over that again right now. You can check your notes and your slides. Instead, I'm going to emphasize that, again, by taking this caret and moving it around, I can create different numbers of clusters, depending on what I'd like. So, for example, if I place it all the way over here to the right, I get three clusters of movies. If I place it all the way here to the left, I can get something like 45 clusters of movies. Also, on the bottom of the dendogram is this elbow plot. We talked about how up-down distance in the elbow plot sort of corresponds to left-right distance in the dendogram. And that as I move the carrot around, you can see there's a black line down there in the elbow plot that moves around in the corresponding space. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and choose 18 clusters. I think that's what we chose in class, just to be consistent. Uh, and I'm going to choose to save those clusters down by going to the red arrow and choosing Save Clusters. So now I can see back in my jump spreadsheet here, at each point I have. Uh, the cluster for each movie. Now how do I know that 18 was a good choice or how do I know that I've done something intelligent in my clustering? At the end of the day, clustering is an exploratory exercise. So if it doesn't tell you something interesting about your data that you didn't know before, it wasn't useful. So to decide that, I'm going to have to start looking at inside each of these clusters and analyzing what do they mean. So for example, this red cluster, does it have a meaning or is it just a group of random movies? So the way I did this in class was using pivot tables uh, in Excel. Um, instead, in this video, I'm going to show you a kind of quick and dirty way to do this. So the quick and dirty way to do this is once I've chosen that I want 18 clusters, let's put that there, I can go into the red arrow and choose Cluster Summary. And you'll see below the dendogram now, there was my dendogram, Jump produces these various options, including the cluster means. So in this table, I see each of the clusters, and for each of these clusters, how many elements were in the cluster, and then what the average value was for each of the different categories, sorry, variables that I used in my clustering. So for example, in cluster one, there were about 40 movies. None of them were marked unknown. About 5% were not action. 10% were marked adventure. And the reason that I can say that these are percentages again was because the original data were zeros and ones. So if I average them together, I get the proportion that had one. If I look back here, all the way at the end in cluster one, the average year among movies in cluster one was like 1982. So these are somewhat older movies. 
All right, if I want to do some analysis with this, I can right click this table, copy the table, and if I fire up Excel, I can paste this table into Excel and then start looking at these numbers, maybe format them a bit better so that they're easier to read, and then do some analysis. A couple of things I'd like to mention. First is that yeah, the variables that occur in this cluster mean summary are only going to be the variables that you used in the clustering. So if you decided to use a subset of the variables because you thought that was going to yield a better clustering, uh, that's okay. But then when you look at this summary here, you won't see the average of those variables. So the easier thing to do, again, is to look back at where we exported all of our data to jump, save this data down as a pivot table in Excel, and then analyze it there. The second thing I'll point out is that often you want to know things about the cluster other than just the mean. So the mean will tell you the centroid of the cluster, but you may want to know some other things that are going on in there. If you want to know those things, again, this table won't be able to teach you that. What you'll have to do is, again, after saving the clusters down in here, export this table to Excel and create a pivot table like we did in class. So in those two respects, this table is sort of limited. On the other hand, if you just want the quick and dirty to sort of look at what's going on in here, creating this table like this, and then maybe copy and pasting it, sending it to Excel, and reformatting these numbers to make them a bit easier to read is probably a good idea. The last thing I'm going to show you in the hierarchical clustering uh, is, again, if you want to look at the parallel coordinate plots. Uh, this is some way that some people like to look at visually what's in each cluster. They find it helpful to do interpretation. So you can go here to the red arrow, choose parallel coordinate plots, and you'll see that for each cluster of uh, movies, so we had chosen 18, so there are 18 separate plots here, I can see uh, what was going on in the cluster. So what we have is that there's one line for every movie in the cluster. So for example, the red cluster has a bunch. Uh, and the value of the line is given by the relative size of that variable for the cluster. So for something like the movies data set where I have you know 18 different uh, clusters to think about, uh, and each of the things are zeros or ones. I don't particularly find these parallel coordinate plots very interesting or informative. If you look on your homework, though, for example, you may see them to be a bit more exciting and helpful in understanding what's going on. All right, that's all I want to say about hierarchical clustering. Please do look at your notes to see again how we did that pivot table from class. Uh, you can take a look at the solutions that I have online. And if you have any questions, do come to office hours or ask me later. All right. Thank you, everyone, and I'll see you in class.